Hello and welcome to the Korea Bay Knitting Podcast. Hello, I'm Rebecca, I'm a knitter and network designer based in Edinburgh and this is a vlog or a podcast all about knitting, what I'm currently knitting on, what I've been knitting on and what I'd like to be casting on in the not too distant future. And usually there's some yarny goodness and acquisitions at the end and I have that today too. <laughs> It has been a month since I filmed. It's been a very busy month. Um, I attended Rhinebeck Sheep and Wool Festival. And so I'm kind of off, off schedule with podcast episodes, which means I've got an obscene amount to share today. Lots of finished objects, a pattern release, 101 things on my needles because I've got major castoritis. Um, so let's see how contained I can keep this. I'll try not to make it too long, um, but I don't want to rush through things. I want to try and give everything its time and its space. <clears throat> I'm also um, fighting the light today. I'm back in my old podcasting spot. I usually film at the corner, but I'm getting as close to the window as I can today because um, it's just dark and grey and miserable here and the light is going pretty quickly. And it's also going to be kind of broken up into sections. I don't think I'll get through all of this on my lunch break, so I'll probably film after work and then potentially tomorrow morning. So it might be a little bit disjointed. Sorry, I've got some weird hiccups. <sighs> there we go. Um, so all my apologies in advance. Uh, oh, one final apology is that I seem to only come to you when I have something to tell you, like pattern release or a test recall. <laughs> um, sorry about that. Like, I don't want that to be the only reason I podcast, but right now it's the thing that like, I'm like, okay, I've got a pattern coming. I need to go and make sure I talk about it. So it's the thing keeping me, keeping me like consistent, even if that is once a month. Um, but hopefully it's looking like it's going to start quieting down for the rest of the year and a lot of my hard deadlines have passed. So I should have a bit more time to do some fun stuff and I have so much fun stuff planned. I keep wanting to make a video about how my knits have worn up, worn, um, what I wear the most and like how the yarn is worn. I've got a whole bunch of questions to ask about designing. People have asked me that I wanted to put in a video. I got my Rainbow my recap. So I've got loads to talk about. I just need some time. <laughs> And I should have that soon. Um, so yeah, that was my apology. My, yeah, I've got so much. I've got one, two, one, two, three, four, five. Let me finish this already. Yeah, I think I had. So one, two, three, four, five finished objects. One, two, three. I think five works in progress, maybe six. And quite a lot of yarn. Oh, another thing, which I've forgotten all about. I have to go get something else. But that's okay, I can get started. So I'll start with what I'm wearing and the very exciting news today is that this pattern is now live. This is my stick season sweater. It is knit in Explorer Knits and Fibers Earthy DK, which is a non-superwash DK base in the colorway Daybreak. And I, I think this is the pattern like I'm most proud of this year so far. Um, I just love it. Like I, it's everything I wanted it to be when we first started talking about this and I'm super delighted. So the little bit of backstory is that I really, really love the art and musical artist Noah Kane or Noah Khan, depending on your accent and how you pronounce that. Um, he's like an indie folk artist from uh, Vermont. And I posted on Instagram like way back in April, I think, um, that, oh, I love the song so much. And Ali from Explore Knits, the diary behind the yarn, messaged me and said, if you're ever thinking about collaboration on this song, I would love to do it with you. And I was like, yeah, that's absolutely perfect. And I said, okay, like, give me some time. And I think, honestly, like, within hours, my mind was, like, bubbling with ideas. I really wanted it to be kind of mentor-inspired because it is a male artist. And I also wanted it to be one of these... I think the way I described it to Ali is, like, the sweater you can just grab on and go anywhere. Like, you feel quite, like, chic. It feels quite, like, nice to wear, like, a pair of jeans, like, go for some dinner, go for coffee. But it's also that sweater that you can, like, grab to take in the car to like go on a hike up the mountains. <laughs> so really, really easy to wear, really, really comfy and like no, nothing fussy about it. Like it's all just like throw on comfort. It's also, um, it's, it fits men and women. So I kind of like the idea of like this being like, I don't know, your boyfriend's sweater that you grab of a morning in the cabin vibe. Like that was my vibe. <laughs> um, and yeah, I think I, like that's exactly, it turned out exactly that way, which is what I'm really pleased with. So it is a drop shoulder sweater. 
Um, I've been wearing this a lot, so it's definitely not in the best condition. <laughs> but it's a drop shoulder sweater and the chest has got this textured pattern. It's just really, really easy knits and pearls. It's not complicated. Um, which is kind of similar to like a traditional, it's really similar to a traditional Gandhi. Like that's, like Gandhi's had this like textured yoke and then plain body. And then the detail I love about this, I'm gonna have to put a picture in because I'm not gonna have to show it very well. Is this seam that goes all the way from the collar, all the way down under the arm and then all the way down the arm to the hem, to, which is like a faux seam. So I spent hours pouring over this really, I think it's called Knitting Gandhi's. Really great book recommended by Brenda for my knit night. And she said, have you had a look at this book? And it was like a gold mine. And what I really loved was like pouring over it and being like, okay, these are features of Gandhi's that I want to pull out. And these are features that like, I don't care so much about. <laughs> so um, the neckline is like a similar fit to a Gandhi, but like doesn't have any of the, a lot of them have this like gusset, this neck gusset, that's the word I'm looking for. Out or like a saddle shoulder. So I didn't do that. A lot of them did have seams or faux seams, so I wanted to use that. Like, it was quite nice to sort of like pick and choose. I really liked it. It felt like a very clean design process. Um, I did start one in a different, if you watch the podcast, you'll know I started it. Bottom up construction, it wasn't delivering. Like it wasn't the look I wanted it to be. So I ripped it out, it started again, top down. And it, as soon as I cast it on, it was like singing to me. I was like, yeah, this is, this is what I wanted. This is perfect. So really, really pleased. And it's such like a really happy song. Like the whole album is called Stick Season. It's called Stick Season? I said this, didn't I? It's the song that's inspired by it's called Stick Season. The whole album's called Stick Season. And Stick Season is a term used in Vermont and I believe other states in New England, which talks about the time of the year when the leaves have fallen, but the snow hasn't started yet. So like around about now, <laughs> that the leaves are all just starting to go. And that's called Sticks, Stick Season. So it just, yeah, it just to me is all yeah and I like that these little texture bits now are just kind of being called the sticks like this is the, these are the sticks which I didn't really do on purpose but that's kind of the name that they've adopted in the texture group which I really like so this is my version um my first finished object I guess is that is the second version which is this one. Oh, it's been sitting in a bag since we took pictures at the weekend so it's got a big crease at the front um this is the Second sample, I'll put some pictures up and this one is for my stepdad. Oh, I can definitely show you the shoulder detail much better this way than me contorting my body. There we go. So you can see it runs from the collar all the way down and all the way down the body to the hem. Um, so this is my stepdad's version. I'll put some pictures of him. We had such a fun time. Um, I was really unorganised with my photos, so some of my pictures are taken from Jasmine, who's my user photographer, that she snapped in the last pictures. I think for the Leith Cardigan pictures, she snapped some extra ones for six season. But I actually, my partner Sam, likes taking pictures, and I ran out of time and wasn't organised with Jasmine, and I said to her, I needed to do them last weekend because we had the, the dire... Well, Ali already had a date fix for the pattern launch, and I didn't want to push the pattern launch back any time but I was struggling to get the dates to work, <laughs> to get pictures in. So last Saturday, it was also like really bad weather. So we found like a fraction of a window of dry weather and went to a, like a woodland area near my parents' house and took some pictures. I was handed a great job, very impressed with him. Um, and my stepdad was so excited. <laughs> I think he's wanted to be in the pictures ever since my brother was in pictures for Lanark back in March. Um, and he did a great job. And so this sweater is, um, it's exactly the pattern. Um, like there's no, I've not like, I've stuck to a size, I've stuck to a size, it was size six. I measured his chest, I got the, the gauge, um, I gave him the ease that he wanted, like all of that to size. Didn't have to fudge any numbers. What I did do is knit the yoke a bit longer. I tried it on him before I joined in the round and knit the yoke. I think it only added like two or three centimetres to each end. And the body, the body and the sleeves are longer. Um, and those are the only changes to the pattern. And quite a few testers tested for men. I think it's a really great men's pattern actually. Um, yeah. So those are my two versions of the pattern. I'll hopefully just keep showing you pictures. The pattern's on sale, it's on Ravelry and on Etsy. Both links are down below. There's also a discount code down below. And there's also a yarn pre-order available from the dyer who dyed this yarn. So I'll include the link to that below. It goes live, I think 7 p.m. UK time, which I think is like 12 mountain time. I'm 
literally plucking these numbers out of air so that could be wrong <laughs> um but this one there's there, there are four colors in the collection there's this which is daybreak there's this which is linen um there's a beautiful green called fur and there's a beautiful like nugget nougat brown like soft chocolatey brown and i've completely forgotten the name it starts with an e i think um but yeah there are four colors and you can do that and they are available i think that's everything about the, the sweater pattern um i'm really pleased with this one i'm so excited with this one i love this sweater i can't take it off <laughs> I had a very cool moment at Rhinebeck where I had given the, the sample to Ali uh, to put on their Explorer Nets booth at Woolen Folk and um, it was pouring with rain and I like ran up to her in the street and I like gave her the sweater and she like tucked it under her jumper and like ran into the venue, it was funny um, and I went, it was busy, I'll talk about Woolen Folk in my Rhinebeck recap but ultimately it was a really really crowded event and right at the end of the day I went over to the Explorer Nets booth um, and it was on the end of the shelf and there was there were like three people standing looking at it and someone was like oh it's called the stick season sweater it's not out yet it's by a designer called Rebecca Clo and she was like oh that's amazing like sorry what did you say again stick season and the other girl was like yeah it's stick season and like explain it to her and I was just standing behind like a proud parent like that's me <laughs> that's my sweater I did that um and I don't think anyone like no one knew it was me or anything but I just really that was a real like pinch me moment it was really cool uh so yeah pleased um so yeah that is the pat as a sweater in addition to the sweater there's also a hat pattern um so i have one sample i plan to have two by now but i got distracted this week so my other one is still on the needles i knit this with my leftover daybreak um sorry yeah daybreak um it's got three sizes all three sizes can be knit within one skein of exploring its yarn this is the smallest size um and it's like all rubbing and texture so it stretches pretty easily. My second sample I'm knitting in the size up and you can see it's got the two by two like chunky rib from the sweater and then the texture and then the bit that I'm really proud of is that it decreases in pattern um so the crown stays in pattern all the way to the top which I think is pretty cool um so you're also there's also like one skein options if you're gonna buy in the pre-order but all of the proceeds from the hat sales will go to the vermont flood relief fund i'll include a link to them down below as well it is like the government recommended fund to donate to earlier this year there was some really bad flooding in vermont and a lot of businesses and families are still rebuilding from that and if you were mentioned way back when i first mentioned stick season have you considered doing something to support Vermont given that it's the thing that's inspired your pattern and I love the idea and I said let, let me think about it and so this is what I've decided to do. So I like this hat a lot. I, I'm not a big hat knitter, like I basically just knit the Pearl Soho Classic red beanie over and over and over again if I ever want a new hat. Um, but this was fun to make, it was really fun and it knits up really quickly um, and yeah I think the largest size uses like 240 meters, no 240 yards which is bang on like slightly less. Anyway, the largest size is slightly less than a full skein of yarn and there are three sizes in the pattern. So yeah, ta-da! Um, cool. I am going to jump straight into some whips because I've got a couple of stick season related whips and I think that's an easy way to like stay on top of things <laughs> or try to and then I'll go back to my other FOs. So the first one is that I have another hat on the go. Um, you can tell I've got a lot going on my needles because my needles are off the whip. <laughs> And it's just the cord. I don't know where needles are. I presume. I mean, they're on another project. I just don't know which one. So at Woolen Folk, I only bought one skein of yarn, and that skein of yarn was a skein of Explorer Nets and Fibers. This is the Rosaria Park, which was from the Spain collection, and this is on the Earthy DK. So it's um, the one same I used for the sweater, and it is beautiful. Um, the tent was dark, so I couldn't see this colour. I just had faith in the, the dyer that this would be the colour I wanted. Um, and I'll say it's much, I think it's much more interesting than the, well, more interesting, but it's quite a bit different than the Superwash base. I remember thinking the Superwash has like some pinks and some like blush tones. Um, and they just don't, this is much like moodier, I think, on the Earthy DK. And it's knitting up beautifully. It looks like a proper like woodland 
like mushy woodland forest floor. <laughs> um, so yeah, I'm but here with the ribbing, my aim is to get this done this weekend, which I definitely think I can. It, I say, it does not take long at all. And it's super nice to knit up. I'm gonna have a little bit less over of this, I think, and I need to decide what to do because I want to use up like every single scrap in the most perfect way because it's such a pretty skein. Um, and I never knit with hand-eyed yarn, so like I don't often. This is basically, like, this project's my first big project in hand-eyed yarn, so um, I want to use up every bit of it. So that is my first work in progress, um, my Sex Season Hat Take 2. Like I said, this one's a small, um, and honestly it fits me pretty good, but I think I do, I think I, I think I stretch it to fit my head, if I'm being honest. I think the ring's relatively stretched out, so I think I probably should have sized up. <laughs> but if I'm honest, I just cast this on and hope for the best. So I think I will make, in fact I know I did, because um, Rebecca, who is, hmm, meh, yarn song on Instagram who has modelled for me quite a few times, Corin and Alder, has also made the hat. She also made the six season but also made the hat and I'm pretty sure she must have knit the smallest size and it fit her two kids who are like not even teenagers yet. I think they're like, I don't know how old they are, I don't know how old kids are but they're little but they talk. <laughs> her two kids have both got one. Um, like nine, ten? God I have no idea. I should just stop talking before I embarrassed myself um, and they made the smallest size and one's got a pom, the girl's got a pom pom, it's so cute, like a pink one with a pom pom and a blue one without um, and it's the smallest size so I think that's proof enough that I stretched this to fit my head. <laughs> so hopefully this one will just fit me straight up. Um, it is in an explore, uh, explore? No, Elizabeth Scarlet bag. They make like makeup pouches but I have a lot of their bags. I've got another one just here. I've got the same one in pink. <laughs> um, I have like three of these I think and I love them. They're really nice for like one skein projects and they just look quite like chic in a little handbag. My other stick season related whip is a stick season without the sticks. So I just absolutely love the way this fits. Um, as a drop shoulder I really like, I like that it's it's not got loads and loads, it's not like a super dramatic drop, it's got quite, it's just just over the shoulders. And I just think it's quite like a flattering angle. I don't know. But I basically have like 10 more planned. I have the yarn for... I've got this one. I've obviously made this one. I have the one I'm about to show you and I have yarn for two more. <laughs> so yeah, I love the sweater. I joined this in the round this morning uh, when I was knitting before work and I realised that makes it much harder to show you that I joined it in the round even though it's better for the knitting that I moved on to the next stage. So this is my stickless stick season and it looks a bit naked. It's not got its collar on so it's just a big gaping neckline and that's about all you can see. Um, it does still have the detail so it has the detail on the shoulder which is something that I just really love. It's hard to see before you pick up for sleeves but the, the detail continues um, all the way down the back this one and I can't really show you that like it, it curls over a little bit when it's a work in progress um but it is there it really looks like a jumbled mess until it's blocked and like I say I've just joined for sleeves Joy's joining the round and then the rubbing detail is continued under the arms again you really can't see that uh yeah I am excited for this one. I am obsessed with pickle green. I just love pickle green so much and so I knew I wanted a pickle green sweater and I think this is pretty much my pickle green sweater that I wanted and it is using my favourite combination of yarn. Actually not quite but close to my favourite combination. Drops Alpaca is my main yarn. It is in the colour Olive Melange or Olive Mix I think and you can see it's kind of got like it's green but it's kind of got yellow. It's lovely. It's really like a rich colour. And I'm holding that with Knitting for Olive mohair which I've not used before in this very apple green. I was a bit worried when this arrived. I struggled to get in pickle green mohair and I was worried when this had arrived that it's a bit too apple-y but I think the two held together is giving it a really beautiful finished colour. And yeah, I'm trying to lean a bit more into some bold knits. I like wearing really simple silhouettes, which for the most part, like I, the ones I reach for day in, day out are quite simple. But if you've got some mohair and it's in an interesting colour, that'd be like a fun way to try new things. 
So I do also have um, a similar sweater quantity worth of blue, like cobalt blue. And I do think at one point that will become, if not this, then a plain raglan sweater, just for the same purpose. So yeah, I am loving this. The fabric is lovely. It's very, very drapey. It's very nice. I feel like I've not knit with mohair for a while, like mohair held, held double. I now have a lot of mohair held double on my needles, like three projects, but I've not had any for a while. So it's been quite nice to get back into it with mohair. It's so soft. <laughs> and I'm excited to see how this mohair holds up over time. Uh, like I say, first time using knitting for all of mohair. I think I've heard some pretty good things about it. And it has an incredible color range. It is a bit of a pricier mohair. I think it's closer to like nine pounds a ball. Um, but yeah, it doesn't look great right now because it's just in that funny, that's the one thing with drop shoulders. I love dirty drop shoulders. I love delaying drop shoulders. I love the way the construction comes together. But for some, ha for some reason, up until the point where you add the collar, they all just look a bit naked and a bit funny looking and like not quite right. So I'll do a bit more of the body. I'll probably finish when the first, whichever runs out first, I will probably stop there, do the collar and then go back to the rest of the pattern, which is what I generally like to do. So yeah, it's, um, I'm in no rush with this one. There's no like deadline. I'm just trying to plod through it. And I think those were all of my stick season. Oh, this is in my bag, which was gifted to me. And I check on their website at least once a week to see if they're doing more of the style bag. This is from Apollonie, which is a French company. And um, they have these beautiful stitch markers. This is um, one of their brooches. They make stitch markers in the same in the same vein. And actually I've got a stitch marker, one that I bought. I was gifted the bag. This is a stitch marker I bought, this one. Um, yeah, but I love this bag so much. It's not my favorite bag. And it's deceptively fits like, that is quite a lot of knitting in there. Deceptively fits quite a lot. But yeah, I do need to, yeah, I still got a bit to, like I just need them to bring these back in stock and like a slightly different fab like a different pattern, but the same fabric would be perfect. <laughs> okay, where to go next? Okay, I've got a couple of accessories and then I think for the next things I need to go and find stuff, which I forgot to bring through. So let me show these first. Okay, my very first one is my Sophie shawl. I don't know if it's a shawl or a scarf, I don't know which one it falls into. I just knit until half my arm was gone and done and then I started in the second half. This is knit in Fonti Angora and I did get a comment on the last video about like checking in fact just about Angora in general being a bit of a questionable fibre and the way that the animals are treated to get Angora is not great. I did fully intend to go and check Fonti's website and see if they had anything on that before today and I've not done that so word of warning like make that decision for yourself um, and I probably should have been more considerate about it. I'm also pretty big on sustainability and I don't eat meat. So I'm mostly vegan at home, so I probably should have taken a bit of consideration about this and I'm kind of embarrassed that I'm not. But it is knit now and I'll just make a decision in the future whether or not I buy more of this yarn. Um, but this is what it's like. It's this beautiful rust colour. It's interesting because this is obviously kind of a rusty colour. And this is a really good way of showing just how much more vibrant red this is. This comes almost like a roasted red colour. Um, I use three balls. And yeah, it's just, I feel like this, I've got a black winter coat and I feel like this is just the perfect little pop of colour under the black winter coat that I need for the winter. Um, we love the Sophie scarf. It's like on the one hand, I'm like, why did I give some of my money to do this? On the other hand, I love the pattern and I knit it a lot. So who cares, <laughs> even if it's so simple. Um, it's super lightweight. I think these are 25 gram balls and I use three, so it's less than hundred grams, but it's really, really warm. And I will say, there's a relative prickle factor to the Angora. I find that if it's, if I'm cold, it's completely fine. As soon as I get a bit warm, I can feel the prickles of it. So I think it's going to be a proper like warm weather, egg, sorry, cold weather scarf. And yeah, it's like this long. <laughs> How long? This long. Um, I can like wrap them all the way around. This is like my Scandi, my Scandinavian look. Um, I don't want to knit balaclava, but I do want the heat of balaclava. This is what I'll wear. I look so cool in Stockholm. Anyway, that is this. It was really fun. I feel like a Sophie scarf is sometimes just so nice to have on the needles. Um, I feel like I should make some more for, for Christmas. But I, I am pretty organised with Christmas so far. 
I mean, I'm not really organized at all. I'm just not making anyone network. <laughs> organized, what nonsense I speak. Um, but I might make another one of these. We will see. Um, and then my other accessory was a real necessity. So I mentioned on the last podcast that we bought a boat. We bought a 23 foot sailing yacht, um, which is affectionately known as like a caravan with a mast. It's a 43 year old boat, so it's got a lot of things that need fixed, but we can sail her, we can sleep overnight on her. Um, and like all in all, it's a really, it's, I'm really happy we did it. It's, it's kind of, like it wasn't really part of like, we never consciously talked about getting a boat, but then now we've got one and like, duh, of course we have a boat. That makes sense. Um, but we've been down there quite a lot because because it's a nice place to be and we get to go out in the boat and do fun things and do some nice like repairing and some cleaning and all those sorts of things. Um, and the last time we were down or a few times ago, I was really cold. I was cold on the boat and unsurprisingly it's cold outside and it's not massively protected from the weather. So I decided the thing that I really needed, I've got some hats, um, but what I really needed was a cowl and it was actually quite a funny story. I we went to the pub and I was cold and I came back and I was chilly, like back on the boat and we were staying over. And I was on Ravelry on my phone looking for a cowl pattern. And I was like, okay, I want it fitted. And I wanted to use up quite a lot of yarn because I want it to be quite squishy and warm next to, my, next to my, like I want a thick layer of fabric there. Um, So like something that's got like slip stitches or like texture. And I want it to be like a column rather than like a wrap around cowl. And then, I was scrolling Ravelry and find my own pattern. <laughs> and I forgot that I have a pattern for a cowl. Um, so this is the Cargill cowl. It is the companion pattern to the Cargill sweater, which I was my very first pattern last, last October. And it's knit up in this all over dip stitch pattern. Um, and it is superbly squishy. It's lovely. It's, it's, yeah, it's exactly what I needed to be honest. Um, and what I love about it is one end can kind of lie flat in like a circle and then this one can kind of tuck under. There we go. And so like this can kind of tuck under my coat nice and flat and then this gets all like cozied up into my neck and it was 100% like exactly what I wanted it to be and I was so happy. Um, I have used some interesting yarn. So this is my leftover for my second skein. So I've not weighed this, to be honest with you. I don't know how much I used. The pattern calls for just under 400 meters. I think I probably used about that, maybe slightly less. Um, this is Sheep Soft by Laxtons. Laxtons are a mill in the UK and they spin up the BFL mash and base that I adore, <laughs> that is used by some dyers. So I know that Sonder, they, dye, they spin up Sonder's yarn. I know the base used by Le Garçon, uh, their BFL Masham is the same base. Masham Mayhem from Ginger Twist is the same base. Needle and Fred in the UK use a fingering weight version of the same base. So all of that is this BFL, 75% 25 BFL Masham base spun by Laxton's. And it's not super easy to get hold of in the UK, which is kind of funny, um, especially not in like, solid colours and somebody recommended when I mentioned that to look at Laxton's because they do ship directly. They've got a separate website called Buy Laxton's I think it's called and that is like an individual like instead of buying like kilos of yarn to dye you can buy individual skeins and their sheep's off base is 75% 25% but it's definitely quite different. I realise here's one I prepared earlier that is my uh chaos hole down there. I've got a basket full of random bits of yarn. <laughs> um, I don't know if this is going to show at all, but this is the this is the base and then this is the sonder, which is the same blend, but you can see the two the two plies in this very clearly. This one is much rounder. So it's actually interesting, the exact same base spun in evidently very different ways. I love this, I really like how it feels. So I was very excited to see this. I got this from Be Inspired Fibres, which is a yarn shop here in Edinburgh over in Marchmont. It is not on their website. If you're ever considering going to that shop, like don't trust the website. They have so much cool stuff and the website is limited. Like only some of their, they stock can Ross reply, which I love, and that's not on the website either. So if you're considering, if you're local and you're considering a trip, they have some really, really great stuff I don't really see elsewhere. 
um, and this is where I bought this. I went in just before I went left for Rhinebeck to pick up some gift skeins of Kinroth kind of for Ply and they had some laxatives and I was like, oh, I wanted to try that, let me pick them up. And so I did. So this is just their, I don't know what it is, just grey, I think it's probably undyed. And I took this with me to Rhinebeck and it was a perfect project. Um, I took this one and a couple of stockinette projects. I took my sticks, stickless sticksies in the pickle green one. Um, and I took a piece I'm working for for a magazine that just needed body, just knit, 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 knit. And this was like a nice bit of, it was small and easy to carry, but it was involved enough that I had something to look at and like something to engage myself. Um, and that was really nice. It was really nice for the plane. And I'm really pleased with it. I wanted yarn that was wool, like woolly wool and not. My original sample was made with mohair and I didn't want mohair because I didn't think that would be great. Like if it got wet or like spray on it on the boat, I wasn't sure how it would react to that. Um, so I wanted a woolly wool, but I wanted it soft so it could go around the neck and this completely fits the bill. So yeah, we're going down to the boat tomorrow. Not tomorrow. When this video goes live, it'll be tomorrow. For me, it's still today's time. And I'm really excited to wear this there and see how it goes and see if it solves my problem. I think it's still quite damp or like a little bit like 10% damp. It is because it's so thick. I think it takes quite a bit for these um, these to dry and I don't think they're fully dried yet and it's been like three days. So I'll put back on a radiator and get it hopefully dried up in time to wear this weekend and oh, it smells so good. It smells like sheepy with my jasmine wool wash which I love. And I just realised that I've just left some ends that are not at all woven in. So I should do that before I take it out too. Uh, yeah. So that is the cargo cowl. It's nice because I gave my first ever sample to my grandmother. And I've never had a sample of this since. So it's nice to now finally have a sample of my own pattern back in my existence. Um, and again, actually I'll put a link for that down below if anyone's interested. Um, it's a fun knit. And I'm excited for it to keep me cosy. Okay. I think I'm gonna run out of time right now. I have to tell two more finished objects, but I'm gonna stop filming. And I'll be back later, later, with my other finished objects and then all of the works in progress. One, two, three, four, four. It's not so bad. I've already shown two of them, so yeah. Four more works in progress. Okay, I'm back. Um, one more work, and, one more finished object, and then something fun. That's not. I call it an FO. It's not really an FO. Um, I realised as I picked this up that I yet again have not woven in some ends. <laughs> so as I mentioned, I went to Rhinebeck, and for some reason before I went, I panicked that I didn't have the right things to wear, and it turned out to be cold sweater weather, rainy for most of the trip. But in my head, I was like, oh, it's going to be warm. I don't know why or where I got this idea from. I checked the weather apps, things didn't tell me that, I just assumed. And so I panicked knit myself a Tolsta t-shirt before I went and it took me like four days. I cast on on a Monday night, I finished on a Thursday and this is it. Again, it has been rumpled and in my wardrobe for a while. It This is pretty true to colour. <laughs> it is a Tolsta t-shirt which is my uh, one of my patterns and it's a super simple basic raglan t-shirt that's super customisable. And this one I knit with two strands of knitting for all of silk mohair held double. And I love it. I absolutely love it. It's so fun. Um, it's really nice. It hits basically exactly where my jeans, my high waisted jeans end. So it feels kind of fancy. I will say, I think it's a little bit too short. I have a little bit of leftover yarn and I used four balls held double. So like just under 500 meters. I don't know how. I'm kind of fudged the sizes, honestly. <laughs> But I've made this pattern so many times and this might be my seventh that I can just get started and I know what I'm doing and I know when to try it on and I can hold it up against my other ones which is really nice. So yeah, it's um, looking pretty good. I actually had to rip it back quite a bit. I knit a certain amount, I don't know where I knit to and then I held it up against my old one and realised it was way bigger than my old one was. My original stripey sample and it was about four or five centimetres bigger, like wider than that one. And that one is already quite big on me. So I decided to rip it back and make it smaller. And honestly, it's perfect. I love this color. I feel like this t-shirt is not gonna get a whole lot of wear for the time being, mostly just because it's cold. Uh, it's rainy, it's disgusting. And I don't have 
very very neat to wear a silk t-shirt um but i'll be excited to get some more wear out of it and yeah i might just rip back the hem and do another like just knit until the yarn runs out and then do the hem again because it's like if i stretch a little bit it's just flashing a little bit of skin which i don't really mind but i don't love so yeah i think i might just do that at some point before summer but other than that it's it's perfect it's so rumpled <laughs> but the color is amazing and yeah i did not work actually i wore it one day to rhyme it but i worked to uh, the saturday night event which is called a woolen affair um, I wasn't sure how much of it was indoors and outdoors, so I wore that underneath my sweater and I took it off for like 10 minutes, my sweater, and then I put this back on over the top. So I was wearing Tolsta and then this on top. <laughs> and that was pretty much how I was for the entire evening. There were heated tents um, and one of the... one I was, At one point, the heat from the tent was blowing right at me and I got really hot, so I took off my sweater and that was like the extent of my warmth <laughs> so yeah toast the tea um i get tagged in so many of these people are making them people are making them warm with long sleeves now and actually i've kind of got a kind of version on my needles but i'll get to that later okay my last thing before jumping into works in progress is my first ever design in a publication um, here's the back, here's, there's me. Um, so yeah, I've been working on this ages ago. This pattern got submitted back in March and I got my preview just not that long ago. And I have a pattern in here that I find the right, I find that the the way that the magazine works is that the, the start of it just has some really beautiful photos and then towards the end has the patterns. So I should be able to just find the pretty pictures. There we go, oh, that's not me. That's not me. Yeah, I'm on page eight. The theme of this edition was monochrome, and so it was all about using two tones together. And this is my cardigan. It's called Viridian, which is like the color of green. And this is the sample that I knit. And there's a second sample. A beautiful yellow sample. Which is knit by Smoke Mother. So it is an Oliver textured pattern it's got a slip stitch and so you are working it kind of it's kind of like rubbing um but you're slipping stitches and so the second strand that kind of like flashes through actually meant to get hmm. no i'll leave let me see if i can find it i'll see i'll have a look Okay, I found it. If you're watching for a while, this will be familiar, but it's really old content. <laughs> um, I started a sweater, which I'd never finished, and then I made a hat and a cowl of the same stitch pattern. And this is a sample that I sent off to Pom Pom when they, like, in the, um, in the pattern when you send it. And I love these two colours together. So this is what the stitch pattern looks like. Um, and that is a red and a pink held together. I forgot I owned this hat. It's pretty cute, though. I should wear it more. The ribbing is too loose. Um, but it's got some it's got some real cute kind of crunch. Who knew I could do that? <laughs> Not me. I didn't know I could do that. I I, I definitely meant this. It, it was definitely me. Um but yeah, so that is the stitch pattern and I just as soon as I like I had it, oh that actually looks really cute. Oh yeah, I'm not putting this away, I'm gonna start wearing it. Um when I saw the monochrome edition, like a lot of their texture patterns really reminded me of this and I just loved how like it was technically two colours and the light is struggling to help I'm making this difficult it's technically two colours but like it looks like a fabric so that was what inspired me um the yarn I used is Bichy Bouche well and the green sample was Bichy Bouche Le Gros Le Gros Lamzoul like the chunky one basically and I am not a huge fan of the colours together <laughs> Um, it's like a grey green and a green. I don't. I, th I think it's interesting, but it's not what I would have chosen. So I definitely find it challenging with the sample because I was like, this is not the colours I would have picked for this. But it looks so good in the finished project that I'm, I don't really mind so much. And then I love the yellow sample. The yellow sample is knit with my mm, farmer's daughter fibres. I think is that right? Whoever always does no ritual dyes. Ritual dyes elder. 
and spin cycle dream state so it is a pricey sample I think um, I think it's it, I will say it, it's a little bit of a shame because obviously with dream state you get that color change and the whole point of this edition was to keep the colors like monotone I think it would look so cool in high contrast is what I'm ultimately trying to say so um I think the pattern has so many options and I understand why for the magazine like it's all in like the single hue but I think it'd be so cool in some contrast colors and my plan is to make a sample when it comes they own it for 12 months basically but when it comes back around to me I think I'll be remaking a sample for myself in a real like color changing yarn I actually want to spin some yarn uh, I've started spinning I rented a wheel I'm not going to get super into spinning on here because I don't think there's a whole lot like when I've got finished yarn I'll show it but I don't think I'll be showing like the process because I don't really know what I'm doing um, 12 months for me to spin a sweater's quantity and actually I only need to spin this, what, this the contrast colour with some like fun high like colour changing like a DK weight so I think it'd be great for that and I think it'd be great for other if there are other spinners out there looking for something and let me just check the yardages because I honestly can't remember but I don't think I'm pretty sure the, the secondary colour there we go yardage so cool to see my name in this so um for my size so for say okay so I would make the size I think I made the I made a bigger size the sample doesn't fit me um for my size which would be 112 centimeters of size three I would need uh 601 meters of yarn I'm pretty sure I could do that like that feels like a reasonable amount to spend and then if I wanted to the secondary color is 707 meters so you know like you can I wouldn't need to, it'd be a fun way to be able to use some hand spun and like have like a slightly bigger project like 600 meters without having to like spin a whole spicer's quantity so that's my plan so yeah this is all I have to show you basically <laughs> this is the stitch pattern <laughs> like this is actually goes really nicely with the cover and um, the sample will come back to me uh, eventually but I don't have it right now and that kind of leads me on to the second thing which is that pom pom is closing down which is really sad um, I have not been knitting for all that long but pom pom is like a real like, staple in the pu publication element of um, the knitting scene and it's a real shame that they're not going to be staying open so my issue this one then is 47 there will be a 48th edition and then it's going to close so I think that's yeah I think it's really sad um, it's a shame that public like, the public public uh, publishing industry can't like it can't work for what we need and they make such beautiful patterns and it's also stunning to look at um but it's not financially feasible so there's um, a a pre-order for this one already and then the 48 will be getting launched pretty soon i think you can also already pre-order that one and i yeah if you want to support them on their way out you definitely can i thought i would show you my other my actual favorite my other favorite i like this one even more than i like my own one um it's the An anjou which is a pattern by Skinny Dipping. <laughs> um, and Alexandra has tested it before, so I was following her on Instagram and didn't, she's designed a few things, but like I don't think she designed or I hadn't seen a published sweater from her before. And then I got the back page and I was like, oh my gosh, I know who that designer is. I don't know who that is. So I messaged her straight away, but I didn't know what the pattern was until my preview copy arrived and I adored the pattern. I think it's so cool. Uh, I wish I'd designed it. I think it's amazing. Um, this is my favourite part by far. It's got this very cool texture pattern and this edging is stunning. Um, she's also got a really cool sample if you follow her on Instagram in not in, mon in a monochrome, in a, like a, a black or like a dark brown with a colour changing yarn, like a rainbow colour. It looks so good. So yeah, these are some of the very cool patterns in this edition. Um, there's also this very cool pair of like hand warmer gloves that you layer up so it's basically like a pair of hand warmers over a pair of gloves that's a better picture of it um yeah so there's a lot in this one and there are lots of sweaters and yeah just it'd be nice to give pom pom a, a big hurrah for what farewell i think it's a real shame that they're closing um i'm very feel very lucky that i got to be in, the, in one of the editions before it closed down and thanks a real shame for for the industry um 
so yeah if you're interested in this one or you want to pre-order their final one or you want to buy any back issues you can and I believe I know that my pattern still stays with them they've confirmed that it stays with them for 12 months even though they're closing down as like a digital copy so um I presume you're still able to get digital copies for at least the next 12 months I don't know if they'll stay on after that so yeah that's my my pom-pom news and that I'm in pom-pom and I have some sad pom-pom news that they're closing they've got a full statement on I think their website and Instagram so if you want to read more about that you can um, and yeah it's a shame we should try and support them more if we can um, there are obviously still other publishing powerhouses out there and it's definitely interesting working with a magazine as a designer I feel like at some point I should talk about the experience of it but I don't really know how to put that into like valuable content <laughs> um, but I am now wrapping up my design with my third magazine I've worked with so one in Pom Pom is out one in another well one magazine is coming <laughs> The test is the test that's done. They've got the sample. Um, funny story. This is a complete like interlude. A funny story. Uh, they asked me to knit a cardigan, and I sent them a sweater. <laughs> and then they emailed me, and they were like, "Oh, we got your sample. It's so nice. We asked for a cardigan." <laughs> so that was horrendous. I was so embarrassed, but they were completely. They were like, "We actually love the sweater. We think it's more accessible. This makes more sense. We're happy to do it." And I think that again, once that one comes back to me and I relaunch it, I'll relaunch it with a cardigan and a sweater option. But yeah, funny story. Um, and then I've got my third one wrapping up now, which is they're both the one that's done and the one that's in development are both for like March, I think next year. And yeah, it's interesting. It's, it's interesting working with a magazine. You share creative control. So they obviously have a very clear image of what the final edition is going to look like. And as a designer, you have a very clear image of what your own pattern is going to look like and so it's interesting to try and find what like the happy balance looks like between those. I think I've decided for myself that these three, it's basically three in a year of magazines is probably enough for a year, it's a lot of work. Even just knitting the sample is a lot of work. Um, I don't want to rule out working with magazines completely, it really gives you an opportunity to do something more editorial and something which is maybe not like the most like commercially viable pattern but something that will really catch eyes and really attract people and will look amazing in photographs and will wear in a more like interesting way than something more commercial um but it's potentially like, I think that's for me like I've seen that as a a route for some like avant-garde <laughs> not really avant-garde nothing avant-garde about it just like things that I'm a bit more a bit more wacky things a bit more out there and then think about them for magazines I've taken that on very literally with my third it's, it's all my blocky mats which are like there so I can see it and I'm excited um, for that one that'll be my third and final magazine I've gone so off topic um, shall I talk about some works in progress I'm sure I said I had six of them but I've shown you two so I only have two that is another sweater I was wearing I washed this week so it's now feeling nice and cosy okay where to start okay Let's start with a newish design and I showed this last time and I feel like it's probably not changed much this last time because I have been working this out and knitting more and working it out and knitting some more and working some out and knitting some more for the last month and a half. Um, I've got a very clear end picture of what this looks like but I actually don't really know what I need to do to get there. Like I'm changing my mind about the middle part a lot. Um, I think I finally got it but I did just rip out some more colour work. So this is my... It's called Rue, R-H-U-E. It's the name of our lighthouse in Scotland. And this is how it's looking so far. God, it looks tiny. It is not, it's, it's not that small. It fits pretty well. Um, that's what it's looking like. So if you can tell my colour work needs blocks. You can actually tell that I steam blocked the yoke and that these have not been steam blocked. <laughs> so it's got a um, contiguous construction, which means you get kind of these like saddle shoulders. And then you join in the round, so it kind of like a cross fit between a raglan and a and a drop shoulder, which I really like. And because you're joining the round fairly early, it means that you can start some colour work. So the colour work starts before the split for sleeves, which I really like. And so far it's got one, two, three, four motifs. You can see that that one is, god, I'm just trying to close up. It's like mirroring the motifs. And we've got one more to go. 
and then the, it's gonna get finished in the contrast color so it's gonna be like a half and half like two different ones i think there'd be an option in the pattern for if you just want to have contrast color but the main sweater in one color and then there'll be one if you want to like have the rest of it i'm struggling to explain but yeah ultimately the bottom of the sweater will be in this white this off-white straw color the color will continue on the sleeves and I just need to get knitting on this. I made some good progress. I watched all six episodes of Pride and Prejudice 1995, Colin Firth and Jennifer Eel. I love it. It's like my favourite thing to watch. I watched that on Sunday. I think I only got through five episodes and I watched the fifth one, the sixth one on Monday. Um, but that was like, I powered through and got some colour work done. <laughs> um, I'm reading a lot right now and I can't colour work knit and read, but I can stock and knit and read. So my stock and knit projects have been getting some love. Um, but I'd like to get... I mean, I've got it on my to-do list to get the body finished this week. That might happen. Maybe tonight I will get some more of this done. So, yeah, that's where we're at. Yeah, it's a bit upside down, but... And I love this big, chunky... I had a real vision for this piece, this middle motif. And I it took me a couple of charts to get it right, and I'm pleased with how it's worked out. So yeah, I'm looking forward to getting the body done because I think I can do some steam blocking and then once the body is, I think it's just annoying because I'm like stopping and starting and ripping back and starting and ripping, you know. Um, and I feel like with colour work, I never know if it looks the way I want it to until the end. <laughs> and I'm not at the end yet. So it's been kind of tricky, uh, like for my brain to wrap my head around it, but I've been enjoying it. I'm using two yarns. I'm using, well, I'm using one yarn and two colours. Um, lower by the fiber company and it is lovely it's really really nice it's dk weight but i think my gauge is 18 stitches that might change after blocking but it's quite a big gauge for quite a for a pretty standard dk weight yarn i think it's 250 meters per 100 grams which actually is only like marginally thicker than this but it plumps up so much that it is really like filling the gaps and it's lovely for color work i got recommended this by someone on instagram I asked for colour book recommendations and they said this and it was it was a really perfect suggestion. I'm enjoying it a lot. I think I'm going to make a second sample because I do like making second samples. And I'm trying to use a different yarn and my current options I think are Retrosaria Brusca or the new Jameson and Smith Shetland 5 ply. Um, need to make a decision. I know that Shetland is going to be so good for colour work because that's basically what it is. Like that would be great. But the Brusca has got this like orange colour I love. So, yeah, I'm really in a green phase at the moment. But no, I'm loving this. I just wanted the next bit done. Like, I just want to be done so I can start making some like thought process about the next stage. Um, and it feels like it's been taking forever. But I think now, I think my brain is clear. I think. And then I need to get it written up, which is going to be fun because it's a whole new construction to me. The fit is bang on, though. I really enjoy the fit. I've not had a fit. I've not had a sweater with this contiguous shaping before and I really, really like it. So we'll keep that in mind for future things. And yeah, it just needs some time. And I've not had all that much time, she says, after admitting to watching five hours of Pride and Prejudice on Friday, Saturday, no, nope, Sunday, but it was the most time I've had recently, ultimately. Um, maybe that'll be finished for the next episode. I'd like it to be finished for the next episode. It's quite nice because I currently, I have one magazine deadline and otherwise I have no more deadlines. Everything that was up this year was kind of set in stone. So like I agreed a date for this well in advance. I have an advent pattern coming that has to be out in time for like December 1st. So everything was quite solid. Like everything had quite a firm deadline. Everything else is on my deadline. So I'm kind of enjoying not really having to get things done by a certain time, but obviously the, the the solution, the, the outcome of that is that I'm not really getting things done, <laughs> which is, is interesting. Um, yeah, I just need some time. And yeah, I just need to stop reading really good books because if I'm reading good books, I don't want to stop and make colour work. Okay, um, okay, this is a less exciting whip potentially. This is a Leith cardigan, which is a cardigan pattern that I released in September. Um, however, it's missing like the, the Leith cardigan has got a very distinct intarsia panel down the back and it's in stripes. And this one you can see has neither intarsia nor stripes. It is just a plain version. So I really have liked, I feel like the drop shoulder v-neck cardigan is everywhere. I love the Ava cardigan from Petite Knit. 
I think Rosetta's just brought one out. Um, but I have a pattern that I know fits me the way I want it to and I already own. So why not just make that one? <laughs> so that's what I'm doing. Um, it is so far to pattern. I did a two by two rib instead of a one by one rib. And I just finished the body yesterday. And so I'm just ready to split for sleeves now, to be honest. Um, it's gonna be, like, I think it's just gonna be the coziest, like, dove, I don't know, dove gray and like a white t-shirt underneath and like a pair of black jeans and, oh, I'm already excited for this. I'm really, I'm looking forward to it. Um, maybe I'll split for sleeves on this soon. Yeah, I think this might be my next. I know I've got my pickle green, but I feel like this could be the next, like, project I want to power through and get finished because it feels so soft. So this yarn, is again closer to, so this is uh, quite close to my, my all time dream fabric. And actually, that's a good point. So, I'm off on a tangent again. I knit a, car, a sweater pattern over a year ago, well over a year ago, and it was the Stockholm sweater by Patina. More on that in a minute, but um, I love, the, I think the pattern's great, but what I truly love about this, this is it. I was wearing it today, hence why I have it so sat out of hand. I just washed this. For the, I wear this so often, like at least, like at least once a week, sometimes five times, five days a week. Um, it's just I adore it, and it has never been depilled, and the fabric still looks immaculate, and there is no felting under the arms. Okay, there's a little bit pill. There's like a one pill here, but like there's no, there's just no felting at all. And it is fluffy and it is nice and it still looks like look at that look at that like the sleeve still looks like clean like it's not gone fuzzy at all um but it's also kept it straight like there's i think i don't even think there's elastic in the neck of this and the neckline tells its shape and yeah love this like this is the by far the most the sweater that I've worn the most that's come out the best. I have other sweaters in like fingering weight and mohair together and they are like matted solid under the arms. Um, I've got some that are felted, some that are just that are like really soft but they just pill constantly so they never feel very clean again because they're always pilled. This is the exception to every single one of those. And this is Drops Alpaca with Sadness Garnet Tin Sock Mohair. And here is my hypothesis. <laughs> The Drops Alpaca is really soft and drapey, which is lovely. Like that drape is amazing. Um, silk mohair is very strong, but the tin silk mohair has 15% wool. And I think that's the magic. I think it's the 15% wool on the mohair that really gives us structure in a different way. But because it's not all wool, it doesn't felt in the same way as other fibres do. There is also an extent to the fact that it's like my one that's felted quite badly under the arm is a raglan and it is under the armpit whereas it's a, this is a drop shoulder so the armpit is lower so it's not like directly on my underarm. I don't know if I'm oversharing right now but I hope you appreciate it. <laughs> anyway all that to say I realised I love this fabric and so I've been trying to experiment a bit more with those fibres ultimately especially in things that I want in the same way something that I want to be wear all the time but cosy and easy to wear and just throw on and this cardigan is exactly that. So I have a uh, Drops in Nord, not Drops Alpaca, I had this in Stash already and I wasn't going to go and order Alpaca just for the sake of it when I had this in Stash. This is the Drops Sock Yarn, it does have Alpaca so I think it's, I don't know, it's like some wool, some Alpaca um, and some nylon. It's lovely, it's soft, it's definitely a little bit less drapey, I don't think you're able to tell. I was going to say it's definitely less drapey than the alpaca, but I'm not sure if that will show up on the screen. Maybe. So like, this is the alpaca and you can see it really droops, it's got no... Whereas this is definitely a bit loftier. This is my <laughs> drape test. And it still drips a little bit, but not quite as much. So yeah, the wool in there and the nylon gives a bit more structure. Um, this is Sandless Garden Tilting Mohair, which I love. It's not as super soft as other mohairs because of the wool. Um, but I think it's great. This is my favourite mohair. This and Philco Lanatilia. I love them both. And that is what I'm using for this. So, as I say, I just got to the underarm. It would be so... The sleeves will knit so quickly, I know that much. 
And then the button band in the leaf is a double knit button band. I think I'm just gonna do my wing. Firstly, cause I made too many leaves <laughs> and I'm over it. No, not so much that, I'm just, it takes so long and I don't think I need it. I really like the idea of a two by two. Like again, I love the Ava cardigan from Petite Knit. I'm just gonna do two by two ribbing and pick up around the neckline as normal. And then just mirror what's been done in the bottom and do quite a thick two by two ribbing. So that's my plan. Um, I will just double check when I put it on that there's enough space around the neck to do a big ribbing. So it doesn't look curl off my neck, otherwise it might be slightly shorter, but that is my plan. I'm having so much fun knitting sleeves right now, so I'm already excited to be on the sleeves element of this. And we will see. But yeah, it's really flying actually. It's really my, primarily my cinema knitting. We go to the cinema quite often, probably, probably once a week. Maybe once every two weeks on average. Like sometimes we go a month without going and then we go every week for a month. Um, and this has been basically my cinema knitting and it's been quite nice just to, I don't love working back and forth. I don't love it. But I find that if I'm doing something like I'm at the cinema, I don't care. <laughs> I'm not concentrating on the purling. I'm just concentrating on the movie. And so it, it gets done. It is such a beautiful variegated dove grey. Just that perfect dove grey. And I've got nothing like this colour in my wardrobe, so I'm really excited for this. If you couldn't already tell. Okay, let's put you away. Two more. One is exciting. Okay, I'm excited. I, maybe not everyone else is. So, a year ago, in October, so more than a year ago, we went on a trip to Dublin, and I cast on a project to take with me, and then I never finished it. But hey, guess who is on the ribbing of the second sleeve and is going to have this to wear soon? This girl. So I told you I love my Stockholm sweater. I just love it. I wore it so much that I decided to make another Stockholm sweater. So I cast it on last year. And then I finished the body. Never touched the sleeves. And then one day, okay, here's the real story. On, I was meant to have an in-person meeting. I'm with a client and I never meet clients and I had to be in something fancy and I couldn't work out how to dress appropriately because I don't really wear fancy clothes. I don't really wear like office clothes. And I was like, you know what? I'll, f I'll have a fancy new sweater. I'll finish this sweater by Thursday. It is our Thursday at the end of the work day. I did not get that done. But that was my, ma my motivation was like, I will have this ready to wear on Thursday. The main thing is I ran out of yarn, so it didn't happen. Um, I don't think this probably wouldn't even work appropriate, but I thought it might be. And so I powered through a first sleeve and I'm literally on the ribbing of my second sleeve. So this will be done and on my blocking mats tonight. I'm excited. I'm so excited to have this and I'm excited to get it for it to no longer be a whip because I don't have that many old whips. I went through them recently. I think there are, there are a couple and there are ones that I don't even know if I can bring myself to finish <laughs> ever, but still. There are actually, other than this, three of them are designs that will never exist. And one of them is a, a project that I will finish, but not right now. So yeah, so this is it. And the yarn is super cool. So it's interesting. I am using Mondine, which is a yarn from Retrosaria Rosa Pomar, Portuguese. And I used this one before to make socks and then a sock shop, sock, sock wool shop, online shop in the UK was closing down and they were getting rid of like five balls of this for no money. It was like less than five pounds a ball and I was like oh I have to get some, I'll make a sweater and it was this really lovely like khaki green colour. I, I, I have more than this but this is all I've got right now on my project bag. Um, and then I looked for a mower to go with it and I got this slate green and it is a very very flat green, like there's no vibrancy to that at all. But I actually think that the end result is a really interesting colour. It's quite vibrant. Um, but really, I was knitting on this in the dark for a few days at the night and I was like, oh, it's a kind of ugly green. Like, oh, am I going to wear this? And then it, the sun hit it the next morning and I was like, oh, it's beautiful. <laughs> so yeah, it's, it's a really interesting one. Um, I'm so excited to have this. I'm interested to see how the yarn softens. It's quite structured. It feels quite solid and I'm hoping we're going to get more drape. It will not be as drapey. I just hit myself in the face. <laughs> it will not be as drapey as my alpaca version because alpaca has much more drape as a general rule. Um, but I'm excited to have a brand new sweater. And especially given that my other one I wear so much, 
that'll be cool. The other fun story about this is that I ran out of mohair and I am convinced I have a ball of this somewhere in my house and I cannot find it anywhere. So I had to order one more ball of mohair and I bought this yarn over a year ago and I thought there is no way I'm gonna get the same dye lot, but we're gonna try. Same dye lot. How lucky is that? So dye lot 48 of slate green. Um, and it's quite funny because I definitely, like I say, I definitely have another ball of this somewhere. So, and I'm all, this is, I need like, not even five grams to finish the sleeve. So when I find that ball and I use my leftover ball of Mondeem, I get myself a cute hat. When I find it, who knows when that will be. So yeah, this will be done today. Um, I'm blocking and that will take six days to dry because it's so cold in my house, but. Da -da -da, da -da. Okay, I need to get my other battery. And then we're gonna wrap up with one more whip and some acquisitions. Okay, one more whip. I just cast this one on. I don't know where I got the audacity to keep casting things on when I have 101 things on my needles, but never mind. So, um, two motivating factors for this cast on. The first one is that there's a new drops base called Drops Daisy. Um, I don't have the ball band, but this is it. It's 100% non superwash merino. I think. <laughs> I don't know. Let me just check that. It's actually true. Um, it's meant to be um, a dupe for. Double Sunday, Santa's Garden Double Sunday. It is 100% wool. Well, that's not very helpful, is it? Maybe drops will tell me. Come on, drops. Um, I just got in the hype, yeah. non super wash tweeted, spun from 100% Peruvian, so yeah, Peruvian Highland wool. So it's the same base as a lot of other, other wools and it's non super wash tweeted and it's very soft. I'm pretty impressed and it has some nice colours. So I just decided I had to try some because I like drops. It's really well priced and their colours are getting better. They keep expanding into new interesting colours. So I thought I'd try some. So I ordered some. The second motivation is that I really wanted to knit another one of my care sweaters, which I released last year because people keep knitting them. I get tagged in care pictures like every other day. It's one of those like, it's not, I don't know, it's not like a, it's not like a big heights pattern, but it just, people just seem to keep knitting them, which I love. Um, and then the third motivation, I guess, is that I'm lazy. And I don't want to knit a full sweater in this gauge recommended. So I am modifying. Last year, somebody knit a lento with the care colour work. And I am basically doing the same thing, but I think a lento is 15 stitches and I'm using my Tolsta t-shirt numbers because I know the Tolsta fits me. Um, but I need to make it a slightly bigger gauge and I'm splitting the difference and I'm doing it at a 16 stitch gauge. So my plan is to basically knit the whole of the yoke to my toaster pattern until I get to the stitches I need for the care colour work repeat and then I'm going to do the colour work repeat and then I'm just going to make the sleeves, ple sleeves plain. And the care colour work repeat, how many stitches I need. But ultimately I've just picked a number for the body which will fit me and which also has enough for full repeats. 20 stitches, 22 stitches, something like that. So the overall pat the overall number of stitches is divisible by the stitch repeat number. So I will get full pattern repeats on the body. I think I'm gonna leave the sleeves plain, but I might do the sleeves, but we'll wait and see. So I've not done very much. Um I decided to do, I was I knew I wanted to do like this and this and I'm holding them more here. So as much as it's at a gauge, a gauge for like a lentil gauge or a toaster gauge, it's like 16 stitches, it's not gonna be super drapey because this is uh, worsted and this is DK. So this is worsted, this is lace. Why am I talking? The words are coming out of my mouth before my brain has caught up with them. So these together should really hold, make it the right gauge. I don't think it will be a very open gauge. I think it will be appropriate <laughs> for the um appropriate for the for the yarn so all i've done so far is the fo the collar i'm going to do a folded collar so i'm just going to follow my toaster patterns but knit the collar double the length and then i'm also not even gonna i'm just gonna sew this sew the collar down because that's my preferred way of doing a folded collar so i'll just leave this up until i'm done and then i'll fold it down after i've got a little way into the yoke 
and I'm liking this so far. It's a real, yeah, the light is losing. I'm, I'm losing, the, losing the fight with the light, but it is a real like caramel color. It's actually very similar to the color of my Dorney sweater, which I don't have here, but. Um, and then the color work's gonna be in the white. So this is like a little like fun cast on. I was just looking forward to something fun and light and easy and engaging. And that's hopefully what this will be. We're going away to a cottage next weekend and I think I'm gonna take this and another project. And yeah, I'm in a bit of a color work mood, which is fine because I've got lots of color work to do. So I'm glad I'm feeling that way. Um, but yeah, so I don't know how long, again, this is just a for fun project. And I'm kind of enjoying that right now, just casting on and not having to worry too much about, oh, I've got this sample due for this deadline. No, I don't. Um, and I can't remember who the person was that knit the lentil carer mashup. Um, I've looked through all the hashtags for the lentil, I've looked through all the hashtags for the care, and I can't find it. So if it's you, do drop me a message. I'd love to give you credit for your wonderful idea. Um, and I'm shamelessly copying you, so I hope that's okay. Um, I do need to decide if I want to do the full thickness thickness. The Care has two colour work options. There's a thin band of colour work and a thick band of colour work. And I have to decide which one I want to do. So what I will be doing is... I don't know what I'm doing. I'm going to start knitting and I'm going to measure my row gauge once I've done a bit of the yoke. I'm pretty much fudging it. I'm just going to measure the gauge as I go. And if I need to change those eyes I will. But I know the size, I know what stitch size, what needle size I use for the lentil, and I know, which is a six millimeter, and for the toast I use a five millimeter, so my plan is to use a five and a half millimeter, and I should get the gauge in between. <laughs> it's my logic. So I'll check my row gauge and I'll see, um, the, the thicker, I prefer to do the thicker colour work band, but if it's going to be super long, then I might do the thin one, but I'll decide that once I know how much, how wide that will be based on the row gauge. Okay, that is all my knitting. I stopped and started so many times that I can't tell if I've got a lot or not. It feels like a lot, but also it's been four weeks, so of course it's a lot of knitting. And I knit a lot, what do I expect? <laughs> um, so I bought some acquisitions. I definitely have more than this, but this is what I found. Like, I ordered the Drops Daisy. I ordered some yarn to swatch with, but I'm not gonna share that right now. Wait and see if it works. <laughs> um. But what I do have is my yarn that I picked up at Rhinebeck, so I thought I would show you that. I will do a full round. I've got lots of footage for my Rhinebeck recap, and I just need to sit down and talk about it. And I've just been too tired to do that, in all honesty. Um, but I thought I'd show what I got here anyway. So my first thing is what it's all in, which is my Explore Knits Fibrous Tote Bag. Um, I mean, I probably would have bought a tote from them, regardless of the circumstances, but the fact that it's a huge tote bag is also amazing. I love a huge tote bag, and I feel like they're hard to come by. And I use one at home, which is some like tech company one that my software developer partner was gifted. And I love the size of it. But now I get to have a cool big giant one with Explorer Nets on it. Inside the bag is a bag. Hey. <laughs> so this is a beautiful bag that was given to me by my Rainbow travel buddy. So if you see this on her tag. Handmade with love by Mega. So um, when we arrived in New York on day one, I think it was day one, she gave Amy and I each a bag. Amy's was had this like beautiful woman with like on the moon on it, and it looked, the woman looked exactly like Amy. Um, it's got some amazing pockets. It's got this beautiful pink lining, and it's so cute. It's just beautiful. It's so well done. I'm so impressed. I tried to make bags, and I just I can make dresses for myself, but can I make a bag? No, I cannot. So like a square bottom, and this is the fabric. It's beautiful. I should be, I'm keeping it aside because I want to be showing it in my remote recap, but I want to just start knitting with this, using it now. Um, so yeah, that is my, oh, it's so nice. Yeah, I should be using it now. It also would just work really well, it's just a tote bag, but the zipper does make it helpful for knitting projects. So that was my first acquisition. And then my second one is something special. I'm going to talk about these before I get into the yarn. Um, so I'm in the lovely uh, Sophia, who is making memories. Is that right? Making memories. Just double checking it that right. Nope. Making treasures. Yes. Making treasures like this. Um, I met her and her adorable children. She had two beautiful little boys. 
one like strap to her with like these big eyes it was so cute at Rhinebeck and she gave me a gift and it's beautiful and I hadn't heard of this before but I would love to share a little bit about it it is the maker's notebook it is with that like drapey you know that like you do the drape test with you know when it feels that way with, with books and it is for the most part a square like a box grid notepad however there are some beautiful elements to it so it starts with um a yearly overview i'm gonna try and help with all these pages but i'm struggling to get so there's a yearly overview at the very beginning i don't know if you can see this because it's quite dark there's a monthly overview um, and then there's a project queue, and then this is the bit that's beautiful that has let's get to a project page. Yeah, project notes. So it has um, this page called project notes, and then it has a uh, pattern, designer, size, gauge, your size, yarn, your swatch, your start and finish date, and then lots of pages to also write notes about it. And then at the very back, um, it's got stuff about your yarn stash, your pattern stash, um, and then needle sizes with a conversion chart, which I thought was amazing because I have no idea what they ever are in other sizes. Um, yarn weights, common pattern abbreviations, which is amazing. Um, and then at the very end, this is great, personal details, and you can put your sizes in there. So you have your like, magic numbers to hand in this beautiful book. Um, it's got the gilded edges as well. So I just thought that was really lovely. I actually still even haven't thanked Sophia other than when I saw her and I was like, oh, this is so beautiful, thank you. I need to message her on Instagram. She wrote me a very, very cute note, which I have torn. Um, so I need to message her. But I thought I would just um, share that one. And I'm thinking my next work in progress, I'm not cast on yet. I'm doing some, I mean, doing some, doing some work. Um, my brain is bubbling with ideas. I thought I would start using this to document some of my design work. I thought it'd be a really nice thing to do. I feel like as a creative person, like I want to have like, oh, my inspiration, you know? Oh, this is where it came from. And I thought it'd be a nice process to do it, but to look back and look at some of my processes along the way. So I think I might start using that to take note. So um, she's also on Instagram. I presume these are also for sale, um, but I thought it'd be really lovely. I also thought it would make a really good Christmas gift. If you have a maker in your life, I thought like this, and a bougie little skein of yarn or like and like a little wool wash sachet like that is the perfect that's a perfect maker's gift okay i think we're on to the yarn now so i just brought one skein of everything that i got to be honest um on the sunday of rhinebeck my bag was in the car and i went back and i put everything i'd bought so far into the bag to see if i had space to buy more yarn and i did so i'm back and bought more yarn the first thing I thought I'd share is that I bought some fibre. Um, this is not going to show up because my colours are just, my light is just completely gone. But it's this like beautiful orange and purple mixed bag of Falkland, um, which is probably not my preferred fibre choice because I'm a newbie and I'd rather use something with like a bit of a longer staple length. But why would I? I had to because I was there. I got two of these, they're four ounces each, which is 110 grams. So I guess I've got 210 grams. So I will get 220 grams. I will get like hopefully like one perfect skein <laughs> um, that I could use for a hat or something cute like that. And the colour is called Rhinebeck. So I had to buy it because the colour was called Rhinebeck. Um, I've got quite a lot of fibre to spend before I get there. Um, I've only just finished my first 100 grams and I want to my second 100 grams and then I've got a 300 gram chunk to get through and then I'll hopefully move on to this. And then onto the yarn. So there were two things I was going for specifically. The first one is this, which is Bare Naked Wool's Kent DK. My Lanark sweater was knit up in some Kent DK and they sent it to me and they asked me what colour I wanted and I picked brown. And I regretted that decision from basically the moment I said it. And ever since then, I've told myself I was going to go back and get some of this. And so I did. And it's beautiful. This colour is wet sand. and I love it. And I don't know what it's going to be yet. I've done some swatching. It wasn't quite the thing I want to make, but I've got a caked up skein and I'm going to keep doing some swatching. I've now got something else in mind. I've got a lot in my brain right now. And I want to be using some, like I came back from Rhinebeck with 24 skeins of yarn. So I need to use some of it in projects soon. <laughs> um, the other thing that I went with the intention of buying was um, some Junction Fibre Mill. Junction Fibre Mill are based in Vermont and they work with small farms there. 
Um, Dave Martin of Settlement Farm raises a blend of Montadale and Cheviot sheep from his bucolic farm in the shadow of Mount Mansfield in Underhill, Vermont. Junction Fiber Mill is a small batch wool processing mill in the heart of White River Junction, Vermont, started in 2021 by two sheep farmer friends, Amanda and Peggy. Um, and it's this beautiful green colour, not massively dissimilar to the colour of my other sweater that's in, but probably a bit brighter. And I'm going to make a stick season with this. Um, stick season is all about Vermont and it, I was going to be so close and I knew there were going to be some Vermont based people there so I told myself I had to buy some Vermont yarn. And they actually have a colour, they make quite a lot of like barber pole, spin cycle esque colours and they have one called stick season. But it's blue, it's like a blue green colour and it's not really my vibe. <laughs> but it's beautiful. I, thought, I kind of wanted to buy it because it's called stick season. But I did not. But I did get this. They were selling out like crazy. They had to like rummage around in a bag to get this for me. And I'm so glad they did. It is a 210 yard DK weight. So it's going to be a little bit chunkier than this one, which is 240 yards. Um, but I think that'll be fine. I'm not too worried about that at all. And I'm excited. I think once my pickle green one is done, I'll cast this one on next. I also have some discontinued woolly knit tweed that I want to make a stick season in. But like, I can... I'll work through them close, like slowly, that's okay. And then, actually I'm thinking I should be, hmm, maybe this will work for what I'm looking for. And then I got some of this yarn from Sock, I don't know if it's Sock Ill or Sock Ill, um, but it is a, um, it is an undyed yarn from Sock Ill. And we actually drove past Sock Ill, which I thought was amazing. It's sport weight, which is 250 yards, for three and a half ounces so I don't really know that I didn't I honestly have no idea what that would be in I don't want three and a half ounces it's somewhere between I um raised in Red Hook New York spawned in the Hudson Valley New York and this to me was just like yeah this is a grey undyed um 2022 batch and it's 40% salt kill farm wool and 60% domestic merino and to me this was like my this is my Rhinebeck wool, right? Like I went all the way there, we drove up into the Hudson Valley, we drove past Sock Hill. This is the yarn from the trip. Um, and it's really plump, it's really lovely. They had some nice colours, they had a beautiful like mustard yellow, but they didn't have it on this dark base in this weight. And I, if they had it, that would have been my, that would have been what I got. But I'm glad I got the undyed. Um, and yeah, it's just got a really nice, really nice character. And then last but not least, I had heard about these from um, Kim and Jonna. They told me about this I, about the sheep, but then I completely forgot about it until I got there. This is called Tide. It is from Nash Island Wool and Yarn, which um, the terrible, like my bad explanation of it ultimately is that there is an island with all these sheep on it in Maine and they don't bother the sheep. Like the sheep just do, they live their life. And then like once a year they go on and they shear the sheep and they take the wool away. And then they turn it into this yarn, which is called Tide. Um, that is a very simplified process of it, to be honest. But they can, um, yeah, so they're called Starcroft Fibre. They can get more than what they have. So like however much they have committed to for that year, like that, like whatever, that's it. That's all you've got because that's all there is. Um, so I got these two colours and if I'm honest, like now I'm thinking should I've got different colours but maybe I'll just stick to my guns and go with these. They were the most like many colours I could think of to be honest. This one is called Lobster Bake and I'm disappointed in, in the colour and the daylight because it's, it's, it's a bit richer than this. It's like a burnt red. And then this one's called Raven which is a, yeah, a really rich navy blue. So I have some colour work planned for these. Um, I have an, again, I have an idea. We'll see when I get around to it. I have, that would be like three patterns away, so I've not even swapped for it yet, but the idea is bubbling. As I get closer, what, what tends to happen is I have this idea and it kind of bubble, 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 bubbles. And then I swatch and then it starts to take more form and then it's on my needles. And then usually it's pretty formed on my needles, apart from sometimes I'm ripping back and changing my mind. Um, and this one is still in the bubbling phase. So I'll get to it at some point. So yeah, that was just one of one skein. I actually said I bought my 24 skeins. I actually didn't, because these are 50 gram skeins, I bought back more than 24 skeins. Sorry, hiccups. But I bought back four sweater quantities, which is quite a lot of yarn. Anyway, shall I just wrap up with a little 
life update. Um, I've been away for a month, so it feels like there's a lot going on. Um, firstly, it should have said this at the start, but I remember in the last episode being quite stressed about the Alder release because every designer and their aunt was releasing a pattern, like all the big names. Everyone, I think like there was no Andrea Maury and no Petite Knit, but every other big designer had a pattern coming out that weekend and I was stressing about it. And it all did so well. So thank you so much for everyone who went to click on it. It got like really high on Mallory and it stayed there for quite a long time and that was just amazing. And now I'm getting tagged with some beautiful pictures and works in progress on Instagram. So a huge thank you. I really appreciate that. Um, there's nothing quite like the, the nerves of a pattern release. Like it just gets you in the gut every time. But um, yeah, it was so nice to be so well received. Um, life update, Rhinebeck is the big one. I went to Rhinebeck and I'm honestly still recovering. <laughs> it was amazing. It was such a nice trip. It was exhausting. I was so tired. I used to travel a lot for work and I haven't done that for like three years and I didn't expect it to take, out, take me out as badly as it did, but I was broken. I was so tired and I came back with a bit of a bug, a bit of a head cold and that didn't shake for a few days and yeah, so I'm now mostly back to routine I think and yeah it's been a bit of a hard push to get back into it but hope most of it's going well um and that's how I'm used to be honest other than that we are going away next weekend to a little cottage on an island and I'm so excited um it's like three nights I think and yeah the plan is just to read and to knit I mean we'll both be reading I'll be knitting Sam's so probably gonna take throw a switch or something and we're yeah that's the plan like we're not gonna move um eat some good food and chill out and just try to get some good sleeping in and things maybe do some nice walks locally and take some nice pictures and things but other than that just really really relax i'm so i feel like it's very much needed um and then yeah i've got one more pattern coming this year which will be my advent pattern i've got two i've got the dafty's cardigan and the dafty's shawl they're both in testing um and they'll come out like I think the 23rd of November is my plan right now, so a pretty quick turnaround from daft days to that, but sorry, from six season to daft days. Um, but I'd like, I'll try and get the yardages up pretty quickly. People can start planning if they're adventing and it'll be at the 23rd. So yeah, that even be some time to like swatch and stuff if you want to before advent season starts. And one of my advent calendars arrived. I won't show it, I don't want to spoil anything, but one of them arrives and I'm going to be casting on with that one. I'm also going to be continuing, I knit a blanket last year and I only knit halfway because it turned out to not be as big as I wanted. And I used a recycled yarn advent and I've ordered the recycled yarn advent again this year. So I'm going to be um, continuing a blanket, hopefully finishing it this year. I'm thinking if it's twice the size it is now, I'll be happy with it as a size. So hopefully that'll be finished. And I'm my first knitted blanket. Other than that, I just have a thousand and one designs in my head, which is fun, but it's, yeah, it's fun. I'm, I'm feeling good about them. I'm feeling good about what's coming. I'm looking forward to getting this one done, but I'm also like not in any big rush. Everything now is on my timeline and I probably have like three at the start of the next year and then move into summer patterns. I think I might have like two summer patterns and that's what I'm thinking. Um, I feel like I had much more to update. I will finish this recording this and I'll think, oh, I forgot to mention that. Oh no, I forgot this. Ah, oh. so apologies if I've forgotten something. I've no, but I don't think I have. I don't really know. Um, either way, it's getting dark in here, so I think it's time for me to wrap up. I'm gonna get a hot drink and do a little bit of chill knitting and then work out what to have for dinner. <laughs> That's my plan. Um, I feel like I've slowly uh broken down over the course of this recording so hope you enjoyed watching that um and yeah the discounts for the sixth season are down below they'll be live until sunday evening so if you want to take advantage of them you can do and of course the hat pattern um anything you if you purchase a hat pattern all the funds will go to the vermont flood relief fund um thank you so much for watching i promise it will not be a month until i come back next time hopefully two weeks and until then happy knitting